Has the iPad just become a creator's dream? Well, Apple has just unveiled in WWDC a new version of iPad OS 26, which gives us a new glassy look. But I'm going to talk about some of the features which I think are going to be very good if you want your iPad to be a more productive tool, much more like a MacBook Pro or MacBook Air, and if you use it for video and audio creation. So first of all, let's take a look at how this new iPad works in terms of its UI. Now it's been updated to um, iPad, Mac OS, uh, iPad OS 26. I've got the developer preview here, so it's very buggy, but let me show you what is new if you make video or music on your iPad Pro. Okay, so the biggest change to the iPad, in my opinion, first of all, is that we can now do multitasking in the same way that we can do it on a MacBook Pro or a MacBook Air. And that means you can have window management just the way you want it. So apps no longer need to be open split view. Uh, they're not locked to set certain parameters of the screen. You can open multiple apps and you can drag them around the screen just like you can on a MacBook Air or a MacBook Pro. So I think that's gonna be great. This screen is a little small. This is the 11 inch version, but I think it's a nice update, especially if you connect it to something like this, which is the cinema display or an external monitor. So let's just say I'm browsing the web. What you can do, I'm here on Epidemic Sounds, just looking at some music. I can drag out the corner right here. And now this turns it into a movable window, just like on Mac. So you can put it anywhere you want. They have this new flick option, where if you flick it to the side, it's going to uh, align it properly. Let's just drag that out there. Whoops, let's just drag this out. Everything is a little bit fiddly in this preview, but I think uh, once they've updated, it's gonna work well. I'm gonna take out this uh, tab here. Let's have that on the side. And you can see here that we can, of course, drag uh, each corner around. I've got Spotify open there. We've got our Files app open over here. Oh, sorry, this is Safari still. Files down here. A little bit messy, and I think the screen is a little bit small on the iPad Pro, but it does mean that you can maybe get more done. You can drag this out. As I've mentioned as well, if you hover up over here, you can press this icon, and they will all snap. Now, they're overlapping a little bit here, but it does mean you can quickly control your apps a little bit faster than you could before. Next up, they've added the red, yellow, and green buttons from macOS and put them here on the iPad for the first time. It's taken them a very long time to do this, but essentially you can close an app out using these, you can minimize the app, or you can make it full screen or hover over it to resize it to different parts of your iPad screen. So that's good. It, it means if you're familiar with a MacBook Air or a MacBook Pro, you can now have that same level of familiarity on the iPad Pro, and I think that is gonna to help to make it a bit more of a productive machine. Definitely great if you're coming from a laptop to an iPad for the first time. A little bit fiddly here on this developer preview, but uh, this is the first version, so I'll let them off. And then here are those trusty Mac buttons. So you can see as I hover over the corner here, they pop out like this. We've also got a, a regular looking cursor as well. I don't know if you've noticed that, but a regular looking cursor on the screen. And then we have our cross, our minimize. We can minimize that right there. Whoop, let's get that back. It'll come back to how it was, a little bit slow to load. We've got our maximize and we've got our close. Very buggy at the moment, <laughs> actually, even when I'm doing this video, I'm trying not to re-record these things. As you can see, it is quite buggy and that's what I want to warn you about later. This isn't something you should probably do on your main iPad just yet. Okay, so this is the first big change if you make music using your iPad Pro. Up until now, it's always been a little bit fiddly and a little bit tricky to choose the microphone that you want to use with your iPad Pro, especially in other apps. Well, now they've added the ability across all audio apps to select the microphone that you want to use. So I'm going to plug in the SL600 microphone and I'll show you exactly how this works. What I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in the SL600 microphone right here. That's plugged in. It's lit up like this. You can see it says uh, if we want to turn on monitoring or not, I'm going to cancel that. So how you actually control this, let's just say uh, you're in a timeline. I'm going to, first of all, let's just drag and drop some music, shall we? And see how well this works. So I'm going to go to my downloads folder. Let's go to music downloads. And I'm just gonna drag this uh, track here that we've got from Epidemic Sounds. And there we go, that's going in perfectly. Now, what if I want to use this SL600? Well, all you have to do is swipe down from here. And you can see it says garage band controls. We're gonna tap that. 
And then we have the option that's already detected the SL600 because I used that last time, but we can now use the system, the iPad microphone, or the SL600, which is really, really cool. And this works across all audio apps. Secondly, you've got all the options that you normally have. So you can have voice isolation, standard or automatic. I'm gonna leave this on standard, and then we can get recording within GarageBand. Now I'm gonna put the microphone to the side here. What you'll also notice is we now have a toolbar just like the Mac at the top here. I like this, this is like slightly hidden, you may not notice it straight away, but drag your mouse to the top of the screen and the toolbar comes up. And you can see it's very Mac-like. We've got uh, open recent projects, uh, we've got the edit menu, the track menu, the mix menu, transport. So I do think this is gonna just help you get around the iPad in certain apps a little bit faster. Now, I've tried this in Microsoft Word and Excel. Those apps haven't been updated yet, but I think when developers get behind this, this is gonna make the iPad very, very nice and productive. And then a really big change if you're a video editor. If you make films, movies, or videos on your iPad Pro using Final Cut Pro, LumaFusion, uh, or iMovie, you know that when you come to export your video, you can't leave the app. So if you've done quite a big project, it could take 10, 15 minutes to export that project. And up until now, you've had to just sit there and leave that workspace open, meaning you can't go and do your emails or something else. Well, that's changed. Now we have background tasks enabled uh, on iPad OS 26. Now, unfortunately, this isn't in the this isn't in the first build of this developer preview, so I can't show that to you, but it was shown off in WWDC. So here's a little clip of how that looks. But I think that's gonna be a great addition. Uh, next, let's look at the Files app as well, because I think that's gonna make things a lot more interesting. So the Files app has had a big change and it really did need it. If you've used an iPad Pro instead of your laptop, you'll know how frustrating it was before. Well, now there's a few changes. First of all, we can change the color of folders, which is handy for some people. But the main ones is that we now get more information. We can uh, kind of do the same things that we can do on a Mac. We can find out how big a file is. We can open multiple, um, essentially files, but finder windows, and we can drag and drop between the Files app and another app a lot easier than we could before. But one thing I really like is that we now have the ability to add a folder to the dock. A bit like when you download something on your Mac, often I'll download sound effects or things I want for a video project. And then uh, just, you know, I'll click the little folder icon and drag and drop that into Final Cut Pro or GarageBand or something like that. You couldn't really do that easily on the iPad before. Now you can, and it works just the same as it does on your MacBook Air or MacBook Pro. So now when we right click on an object, you can see we've got Quick Look, we've got Get Info, just like on a Mac, Compress, we've got all these options. Some of these options were here before, but I like now that you can choose which program to open it with. Now I'm surprised GarageBand isn't on there, but uh, with a lot of other apps, you can, con you can control what program is being opened. I think that's good as well. So instead of always opening in preview, or uh, something else, you can make sure that maybe say a JPEG always opens in Photoshop. So you can see here, I've downloaded some songs and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab these and just drag them into my folder there like this. And you can see it makes it a lot easier if you're downloading something and you wanna manage your files. I'm just gonna grab my other music track and pop that in there as well. Let's do that. Everything is a little bit slower on this preview. But uh, let's just say we now want to create a new uh, folder. We can do that. So I'm going to call this video. There we go. And then we can open this in a new window. And then let's just say we want to drag this around like so. The folder's empty. And then we could drop files between, just like this. Whoops. So as you can see, this is gonna make things a lot easier and a lot more Mac-like. Also what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna unplug my MacBook Air and plug in the iPad Pro to the studio display. And we should see in a second, it will come up. There we go. Studio space looking nice, maybe a little bit overexposed there. And uh, this means again, that we probably have more of like a MacBook feel I think on a studio display so yes you can do a bit of productive work when you're on the go with the iPad but I think it actually comes alive when you essentially plug it into an external display everything comes out full screen which is uh, a little bit big we've got voice memos there we've got garage band there let's close that down 
garage band works nice but i think it's looking more and more like a macbook air and working more and more like a macbook air so again the only issue you might have actually when you're plugged into a studio display is you only have the one USB-C port, but you can use uh, an editor's keys external adapter and the iPad does allow more than one USB device in. So you could have a monitor and you could have a microphone plugged in as well. So how do you feel about these new changes coming to the iPad? Now, what I will say from a personal point of view is don't update your own iPad to this yet. It's very, very buggy. And I'm doing this to experiment with some of the microphones and products that we have here. Otherwise, I wouldn't have done it because it is so buggy at the moment. Secondly, how I feel about it, I'm not sure if it really still does make the iPad more, that much more like a MacBook Pro or a MacBook Air. It still has the same iPad issues. Yes, it's definitely like 20% easier to use as a multitasking creative machine than it was. And obviously, if some of the things I've mentioned there were big, big issues to you before, this may be a great update for you. But I do like the direction that Apple is going with this. And I personally think now the iPads are getting faster, the base models, I would no longer go for an iPad Pro. I would go for a base level or an iPad Air because you can use external storage with USB-C. There's loads cheaper. I mean, this iPad Pro with the keyboard and Apple Pencil, you're looking at about £1,400. An M4 MacBook Air is £999, and I would go for the MacBook Air every day. But if you can get an iPad for four to £500, maybe add a third-party keyboard, um, or splash out for the Magic Keyboard, it's then a little bit cheaper. It's then, again, a travel device like it used to be. But for £1,400, I wouldn't use this as my productivity machine without owning a MacBook Air or a MacBook Pro. So if you want to grab one of these covers, by the way, I know a lot of you are going to ask about this. This is the Final Cut Pro cover. Well, let's just change that. This is the Final Cut Pro cover for the iPad. We have them for Luma Fusion uh, and lots of other programs as well. So I'll put a link in the description below. But thanks for watching this video. If you want to see more updates on the iPad OS 26 uh, preview, keep subscribed. Let me know in the comments and I'll see you in the next video.